hot coffee, chicken, egg harbor. Sounds like a delicious diner menu, right? Well, these delicious dishes are actually town names. And oh yeah, stay tuned to see what space smells like. Hey Wanderers, welcome back to another Foolish Wanderers podcast, the podcast about anything and everything. Today we're going to be talking about some of the strangest town names and how they came to be. All right. Now Katrina, I just have one question about the intro. Yes. What is an egg harbor? We'll get into it. Okay. <laughs> There's like, yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a wholesome story. I like it. But it's a town name. Okay. All right. So the first one we're going to start off with is Chicken, Alaska. I like it. Name it. Name the town (laughs) after something you like. You like chickens? Well, you don't like chickens. You like to eat them. I like dead chicken. I like to eat consumed chicken. I like chicken nuggets. I like chicken nuggets. Yes. (laughs) I like chicken breast, too. I've... I've I've matured. Oh, have you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I just... like a nice seasoned chicken breast as well. Okay, it's not just chicken tendies and it's chicken breasties. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Chicken Alaska is said that the early miners that came here in search of gold kept themselves alive by eating ptarmigans, spelled P T A R M I G A N S. Which is silent P. It's a silent P. So, they're very abundant in this area. So, ptarmigans, they're like kind of like a white, they look almost like a, like a dove, kind of. They're kind of a pretty bird. But it's, it's a chicken? It, 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 yeah. Not really. It's just so a, okay. Imagine it's a game bird. So oh, different. It, yeah, kind of. Yeah. So imagine like a head of a dove with owl-looking feet. It's like they have big feet. It's just like a plump little body with the dove head and they got big feet. Okay. They're kind of a cute bird. I like them. Well, yeah. Kind so of, <laughs> it sounds kind of comical with the big feet. Yeah, they got big feet, but they're cute. Uh, so yes, yeah, so they're very prevalent around here. So that's what the what the gold miners came in ate. Um, when the town was to be incorporated in 1902, people suggested that the name Ptarmigan to, to name the town. Mm-hmm. However, since no one could agree on the correct spelling... See? The silent P. <laughs> the silent P, yes. There goes the English language, messing stuff up. Yep. So the chicken is stealing valor from the ptarmigan. Kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because they couldn't agree on the name of spelling of ptarmigan, so they named it chicken. <laughs> Yep. Oh lord! And they claimed to claim it to name it chicken, so that way they could avoid embarrassing situations. What kind of embarrass? Wait, they. I, I suppose if you didn't know how to spell your own town name, I guess like if they forgot the P, you know. Okay. In it, my head, I first thought like, oh, naming it ptarmigan is so embarrassing that we would name it after this bird. So instead, <laughs> we'll name it after this more popular bird, chicken. <laughs> the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought it was an embarrassing situation, but yours makes more sense with the spelling. The spelling, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. What a thrill it would be to live in Chicken, Alaska. I think Kendra would die if she lived in Chicken, Alaska. If it's you hate like. Birds. I, if it's yeah. overrun with ptarmigans. No, can't deal with that. Can't deal with that. <laughs> They're no, cute no. little birds, but Kendra would hide in her house the whole time. Mm-hmm. My sweet baby. <laughs> My sweet baby Inca, mm-hmm. not a human baby, but no, dog she's baby, a, a puppy. She's yeah. a puppy. She is the apple has not fallen far from the tree because oh, no. she is also terrified of birds. Is she really? Oh yeah. Oh. Mr. Anyone... Kendra, Mr. Kendra brought her outside, and it was a big mm-hmm. bird on the ground, and she tried to go <laughs> after it, and then it like squawked, and she ran away behind his legs. <laughs> So, the apple has not fallen far from the tree. I thought you meant, like, every time she sees one, she cowers. But it's just because she tried to intimidate it, and it didn't like her. <laughs> so mm-hmm. she's like, oh, never mind. Yep. <laughs> oh, Inka, I love you. Mm-hmm. All right. So next one that I have is Denver, Colorado. Home oh. to 
yeah, home to the terrifying airport. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was an interesting episode. It was, yeah. I what had else? remembered hearing, um, you know, just you hear stuff like rumors about the Denver airport being like evil or something. But yeah. you don't yep. really know, you know, the behind the scenes stuff mm-hmm. until we did that episode. Yeah, like all like the gargoyles and then mm-hmm. it's like underneath it and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. It was like an opening to hell. Very neat. <laughs> Very interesting. And the statue of the weird looking um, phallic horse you know killed the Phallic sculpture it's, it's blue it's a mustache <laughs> but i thought it was supposed to look like <laughs> what? oh never mind never mind anyway <laughs> if any of the listeners want to listen to that episode it was episode 44 the mysterious denver airport mm-hmm. can continue, a- continue continue okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so Colorado's capital, Denver, is named after James W. Denver, a 19th century Renaissance man who served in Congress. He fought in the U.S. Army and served as governor of Kansas Territory. He only visited his namesake city twice. In, what? Yeah. <laughs> in 1875 and in 1882. And was reportedly unhappy that the residents didn't give him more of a hero's welcome, even but though he like, visited twice. Yeah, I'm like, how are they supposed to know who this man is? Exactly. I had no idea. A lot of na- a lot of towns are named after people. Who never lived there? Yeah, like, they had no real connection. They're just like, oh, this is a cool dude, or cool lady. And they, a lot of times, well, I guess a lot of them do name it after themselves. Uh-huh. But, like, sometimes you don't know it's named after you, or, like, you don't know who it's named after. So it's like, I don't blame them for not giving him, a, like, a parade when he walked into town (laughs) you know i mean he was the governor of kansas yeah i mean like especially when it's 1875 and there's no internet and you're like there's not instagram to go see or tiktok you're not like you're not announcing like maybe it's like a letter you're announcing that you're gonna come but like it's not like all over the news and stuff that you're coming into town right Mm -hmm. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. James W. Denver can go bite a rock. <laughs> oh boy. Heroes welcome. Oh man. So the next one I have is one of our favorite cities, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Whoop whoop. whoop. Mini. Mini. So this Minnesota city gets its name from actually two languages. In 1852, an early school t- school teacher combined the Sioux word mini M N I for water with the Greek word polis for city to get the name to get the name that paid tribute to the town's lakes. So water city. That's what Minneapolis means. Cool. Isn't that cool? I like it. Yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, land of 10,000 lakes and you get mm-hmm. Water City. I like it. It's a cute little one. Mm-hmm. The next one I got is one of the biggest cities in the U.S., Chicago, Illinois. Or Illinois. Illinois, right? It's in Illinois, yeah. Who says Illinois? A lot of people <laughs> to make it? fun of it. Who? Oh, to make know. fun of it. Yeah, it's kind of like a funny... Sometimes I say it just like kind of poke fun for oh, the noise. Right. It's like Ar- it's like Arkansas is Arkansas. Arkansas. <laughs> Arkansas. 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 Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So Chica- Chicago, long before Europeans arrived in the area, now known as Chicago, it was inhabited by the Miami and Illinois peoples. So unsurprisingly, the city's name derives from Native American languages. So according to the Chicago Historical Society, it's believed that the name comes from Chicawa, which means striped skunk. <laughs> However, <laughs> okay, that's pretty. That's pretty bad. Yeah. However, I've also seen it like in different articles. Just like that word, po- Chicawa also supposedly means stinky onion. Or wild garlic. All right. I don't know which one's worse. <laughs> and it's also the name for a type of wild leek. Um, so like the veg- like is it a vegetable? I think so. I think it's a vegetable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The leeks were found near the mouth of the- mouth of the Chicago River. Hence the name. So it grew in that area. So that's why they called the city Chicago. Chicago. Got it. Chicago. So the French had a hard time pronouncing the name. So instead, they pronounced it as Chicago, spelled C H E C A G O U. It was later then transformed to the Chicago we know today. So simplified. Because the French couldn't say the real word. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought that was kind of interesting. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Stinky onion. Stinky onion. That's about right. <laughs> oh, stinky onion. All right. So the next one I got, we're going to Florida. 
is Boca Raton. Ooh, so, <laughs> where all the blue hairs go. Yeah. So although the Spanish occasionally used Boca Raton's harbor, the first settlers arrived in the area about 1895, around the same time as the Florida East Coast Railway. The city's name comes from Boca de Ratones, a Spanish term meaning rat's mouth. No! <laughs> <laughs> that appeared on early maps and was referred to, to so like that name actually referred was on like early maps at the time. And the name referred to hidden sharp pointed rocks that nod or fretted ship's cables. So that's rats. That's, that's what a rat's mouth is. Yeah. So basically, it's kind of like they're. It's kind of like they equated it to rats chewing on the ropes and stuff. So it, like all these little rocks would like tear at the ropes and mm -hmm. nod away. So yeah, book a raton. All right. Rat's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we get into Egg Harbor, since you're very curious, Kendra. I was. It's good. <laughs> All right. So, Egg Harbor, Wisconsin. There are very few theories regarding Egg Harbor's origins. One of the most popular and well-documented theories is about a great battle that took place just off shore in 1825. According to an 1862 recounting, a group of traders traveling in a handful of small boats to Mackinac Island, which is a, actually a really cool island. It maybe could be its own, like, mini-podcast. Have you, Have been, you been there? No, but I want to. I've known people that have gone there, and I've seen a lot on TikTok, and it's super cool. Basically, it's just, like, this little remote island that there's no cars on it. You get around by, like, horse and carriage, or in the winter with um, the snowmobiles. snowmobiles? Yeah, wow. like, bikes and snowmobiles and stuff. But, yeah, and they have a lot of fudge shops. Um, it's just, like, it's just a really cute little place, and you can only get there on a ferry. So you park your car, and you take a boat out to the island. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's pretty cool. I want to go there. This is in Wisconsin? Michigan. Okay. So getting back to the story, <laughs> right? So these trading boats were going past Mackinac Island, and then they decided to take shelter on an unnamed harbor overnight. So as they paddled toward shore, a friendly race broke out between the boats, with each boat trying to overtake its neighbor. In order to slow each other's progress, the traders began tossing bits of hardtack, or if you guys don't know what hardtack is, I love hardtack. Have you tried it? Oh, when I could have bread and gluten. <laughs> that was the thing. I would love it. I, my grandparents ate it. It's really? like a, it's like a Finnish thing. I don't know if it's like hard tack, hard tack, but okay, it's like a biscuit or like a really cracker, like rye rye crisp. Yeah, it's like really hard. I love it. And we put really? butter, we put like butter or cheese or um like some jelly on it, like jam. Okay. Oh, that's one of my favorite little treats. But Is I can't true? have it anymore. I know. Yeah. I thought, I guess, like, in history class, people would, like, in history would always say, like, they hated hardtack. Like, it was necessary because it kept so well. You know Like, what? for our soldiers and stuff. You know what I say, Katrina, to that? What? What? There's a reason why Anthony Bourdain never had an episode on Finnish cuisine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and that's the reason. Because <laughs> you guys, because you it's eat a bunch of that... It's a bunch of peasant food. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's why. <laughs> It's just very different tastes peasant for very food. harsh climate. Oh, it's peasant food. <laughs> he went to Sweden. He didn't go uh, to Finland. Okay. He went to Denmark. He did. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, There's boy. nothing rotten in Denmark, okay, Shakespeare? The rotten thing is in Finland because apparently it's the food, <laughs> according to Anthony Bourdain. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, no. All right, so, yeah, so hardtack is, like, a very hard biscuit or cracker. Delicious! Okay, <laughs> Kendra says delicious. So they were throwing pieces of this stuff at each other. But this is a waste. <laughs> yeah. I would, be I would be sitting in that boat with my mouth open, like, the hungry, hungry <laughs> hippos, like... <laughs> You. you probably break a tooth. Okay. <laughs> so they soon realized that they might need need to eat the hardtack later. So uh. instead <laughs> So instead they started throwing eggs. So according to one witness, the fighting didn't stop once the traders reached shore. Instead they repeated their egg fight on land, stopping only once they ran out of eggs and they ha and they laughed until exhaustion. So <laughs> How many eggs did they have? <laughs> I don't know. Was and it just a shipment of eggs? They were just throwing <laughs> just the wasted shipment. It. Yeah, just wasted it. I don't know. Yeah, could have been. I mean, right. you can eat eggs too, but I suppose they couldn't really cook them. So, mm -hmm. but yep. So that the next day, speeches were made commemorating the Great Egg Battle, and Egg Harbor was given its name. Now I just want hard tack. <laughs> Can you make it with gluten-free version? I don't know. I've gone on, like, Amazon to see if they have gluten-free, <laughs> and it was, like, $60. Oh, my goodness. Let me see. 
gluten-free hardtack. Survival rations. Oh my lord. This <laughs> is so st- makes me feel so stupid. <laughs> no, no. They're I'm talking ch- about apocalypse I'm, stuff. Oh my god. I'm goodness. a cheap date, people. I'm a cheap <laughs> date, but I'm almost married, so I'm sorry. Here's how you make it. Okay, here's a recipe. Give me of gluten free hardtack. Two cups of almond flour. Mm-hmm. Are you writing this down? Hold on, I need a pen. <laughs> Almond flour? You say yes, two cups? Almond. Two cups of almond flour. Two cups of almond flour. Oh, okay. Okay. One fourth to one third cup of water. To one third? Yes. Yep. Alright. And then half to one full teaspoon of salt, which is optional. Oh, you gotta have the salt. You gotta have salt. It's bland without it. I love bland, but like, you've gotta have the salt. Yeah. Plus you need a little sprinkling of almond flour for rolling out the dough, so that way it won't stick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. So then you preheat your oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. 250? 250. Low and slow, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right, then you put your almond flour into the mixing bowl, Mm -hmm. add your salt, Mm -hmm. combine it with the flour. Mm -hmm. Then you gradually add the water a few tablespoons at a time, thoroughly mixing it. Gradually. Gradually. You only add enough water until a soft dough is formed. So that's why they say a fourth to a third cup, because it kind of depends. Berries. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right, so once you got your floured rolling surface, you put a ball of dough in the middle and roll it out until it's approximately one-fourth of an inch thick. Okay, roll out. What was it, an inch thick? Quarter inch. Quarter inch, got it. Okay. All right, then you cut it out to whatever shape you want. Yep, I do rectangles, but... (laughs) Rectangles, okay. So then you transfer the hard tack to an ungreased cookie sheet. So no butter, no oil, just plain on the cookie sheet. Mm-hmm. All right. Then you need to poke some holes so that way they don't like puff up. Yep. Don't want that. Don't want <laughs> you don't want a crispy cracker. You want a hard and dense. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then you put your cookie sheet on a rack near the center of the oven and bake for a total of four hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Four hours. Okay. Four hours. <laughs> yeah. Low and slow. Low and slow. Yep. Let's see. The cooled almond flour hardtack rounds will will remain pale in color with a little bit of browning on the bottom and will be extremely hard due to their minimal water content. Thus, how you make gluten-free hardtack. Oh, so good. (laughs) You'll have to let us know, Kendra, how it goes. I will. (laughs) If it's actually good. I'm going to go find some Lingdon Berry jam and then I'll tell you. Okay. I bet, I think almond flour would taste better than regular flour, wouldn't it? Because it has the almond taste in it. It's like sweeter, I think a little bit. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. hmm. You have to let us know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, now we should get back to our, <laughs> our podcast. We interrupt your podcast for a brief cooking instruction. <laughs> <laughs> a brief bland cooking instruction. <laughs> a brief bland a cooking. A Finnish cuisine. <laughs> Ooh, delicious. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, getting back to city names. We now go on to Modesto, California. Ooh. Modesto. Modesto. Yes. Modesto. It's a fun I word like, to say. It is a fun... Modest, Modesto. So while most towns are named after a slightly egotistical person that started the town... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Modesto is actually the complete opposite. So founded in 1870 and, and incorporated in 1884, Modesto was the last stop on the Central Pacific Railroad Line. Town residents decided that they wanted to name their new town after the financer William Chapman Ralston to honor the man that brought them the railroad and connected them to the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. But Ralston, he was too humble and asked the town to find a more suitable namesake. So instead, the residents decided to call their name Modesto in honor of Ralston's modesty. So modest, oh, that is Modesto, California. Isn't that cool? I like it. I thought it, you know, I thought it was going to be a Spanish name. <laughs> I mean, it kind of sounds like it, yeah. It sounded like it, and it's California. So it's, it's like, California, oh, it's going to yeah. be, oh, I like that story. That's it's really cute. nice. That's yeah, cute. I like, it. I like it. That's probably my favorite one in here. I like it. Mine's probably so far the Egg Harbor. <laughs> That's your favorite? Just because having it fun made me think eggs. of, you know, no, because it made me think of having heart attack with your papa. <laughs> So it was like Aww. rye crisp, but yeah, Aww. same thing. That's cute. I like mm-hmm. it. All right. So the next one we got is hot coffee, Mississippi. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, mm-hmm. spelled H O T C O F F E E. The cup of joe you have in the morning, hot coffee. Yes. I have so, tea. You have tea. Delicious. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they call it a cup of joe? I don't want to know. <laughs> okay. I don't want to know. Probably don't either. Okay. All right. So, Hot Coffee Mississippi was you guessed it, named for its damn fine cup of coffee. Woo! <laughs> so according to WPA, or Works Process Administration, according to their article about Mississippi written during the Great Depression, a Civil War veteran named J.J. Davis built a store at the intersection of two major roads in Mississippi, hoping to attract travelers. Quote, he hung, up, he hung a coffee pot over his door and served coffee that was both hot and good, made of pure spring water and New Orleans beans, explains a WPA historian. He used, quote, he used molasses drippings for sugar, and the customer could have either long or short sweetening. He refused to serve cream, saying it ruined the taste. What? <laughs> I love cream and sugar. I, yeah, unless I'm having like a cake or something with coffee, I don't like it black. It's too bitter. Mr. But Kendra would not visit that town. He likes cream. He drinks cream, then he has a little bit of coffee <laughs> in the cup. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> so the, the 19th century coffee connoisseur soon developed a reputation for his superior beans. Ooh, superior Ooh. beans. Ooh, superior. And both travelers and local politicians would frequent his shop. Is the old-timey Starbucks. <laughs> According to legend, Davis started calling the community that he set up the shop hot coffee after a traveling salesman burnt his mouth trying to drink Davis's coffee too quickly, calling out, quote, Mr. This is hot coffee. Yes. That was the... That's why it's called hot coffee, because um, someone burnt their mouth on the coffee and then... Declared that it was <laughs> hot coffee. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right. So it's just a really good cup of coffee. Yep. Got it. <laughs> yep. I mean, I wonder what the population is. I'm curious. Hold on. Oh, dang. Okay. What do you think is the population, Kendra? 60,000. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. 9,761. I was oh, that's still That's still big. That's a decent that's sized a, that's town. That's a decent size. Yeah. Town, yeah. Nice. All right. So next one we got is Zilwaukee, Michigan. Not Milwaukee, uh-huh. Wisconsin. Zilwaukee, Michigan. All right. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so you may have noticed that the name Zilwaukee sounds a bit like Milwaukee. A little bit. That's no coincidence. Zilwaukee, Michigan wasn't just named after, after Milwaukee as a tribute to Wisconsin City, but to trick potential settlers who were interested in moving to Milwaukee. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So it started in 1848 by, the, by New Yorkers Daniel and Solomon Johnson. The settlement initially consisted of of little more than a few houses in a sawmill. In need of workers, the Johnson brothers decided the best way to attract settlers was through deceit. They named their little riverside settlement Zilwaukee, spelled Z-I-L-W-A-U-K-I-E, later changed to Zilwaukee, Z-I-L-W-A-U-K-E-E. So like Milwaukee just with the Z in front of it. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. And waited for settlers to start pouring in. So it's unclear whether their plan was actually successful or not, but settlers did eventually arrive. Though it may have been the general desire for work, rather than the Johnson brothers' clever scheme that attracted the town's residents. So we don't really know if it worked or not, because if you look at a map, it's kind of different <laughs> and in completely different um, locations. Yeah, and Milwaukee is a large city, and I've yeah, never heard of Milwaukee. I have not either. I don't. I haven't heard at most of these places. I've heard of <laughs> Minneapolis, Denver. Yeah. Yep. Um, Modesto, but mm-hmm. not Zilwaukee. Why wouldn't so. they just name it Milwaukee, but have the spelling different? That's a good question. Because I would have, I... if that's what their whole thing was to trick them into thinking that it was Milwaukee. That's true. Why wouldn't you just name it Milwaukee? I don't know. We need a time machine. We need to go back and find I'm the Johnson ask them. <laughs> Yes, we need to ask them. We need like, to ask hey, them. Why didn't you just put, why don't you just spell Milwaukee differently? Women get things done. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So the last one that I have is kind of interesting. It's called Toad Suck, Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> so this one has a few theories. With, no one's Toad actually, Suck. 
<laughs> toads suck. Yep. So no one's actually completely sure how it got its name, but there's a few theories. So theory one, the most popular and most colorful legend says that when barges had traveled up and down the Arkansas River, it was not uncommon for them to run aground at this location when the water was level was too low. So this particular spot in the Arkansas River had been described more than once as six inches deep and half a mile wide. So when the river level, like the water level would go down, boats would get stuck because six inches is not nearly enough water for them to go through. Yeah. So to pass the time until it rose up again, the captains and crew often frequented the saloon that was just up on the hill and drank themselves silly. The locals were aghast at the sight of the drunken sailors who had, quote, sucked on the bottle until they were swollen up like toads. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the name Toad Toad Suck, suck. according to this theory. So the second theory makes a little bit more sense. Um, So because it has to do with river terminology. So there's a somewhat obscure river term for protected eddy along the riverbank called a, quote, suck. When the river recedes, frogs and tadpoles can easily be seen in the shallow water on the river's edge. It wouldn't be too far-fetched to imagine the riverboat captain hollering at his crew to try to avoid that, quote, toad suck over yonder when they're in danger of running aground. So, you know, it's like a low, low point in the river. Mm-hmm. You see a bunch of toads. Toad suck. Toad suck. Toad suck. Old maps also show areas called bear suck and cow suck. <laughs> so it seems that it was fairly common descriptor, descriptor back in the day. So... You see an animal and you see this little point in the river, combine them, and that's how you get the name. All right, let's rank toad <laughs> suck, bear suck, and cow suck oh, in no. order from okay. like lame to sort of lame. Okay, <laughs> sort of lame. So I think I think mine cow suck is, is pretty funny. Mine is cow suck is the worst. <laughs> Toad suck is second, and then bear suck would be the best. Okay, I'd flip toad suck and bear suck around. I say toad is the best, bear is middle, cow is the. We're bottom. just we're just crapping on cows today. I'm sorry, cows. I love you. I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can take your love from Katrina, but not me. Okay. All right. Yeah. What was your favorite strange? History of a name. But Mine a city still name. was Egg Harbor because Egg Harbor. Why did, why did they have so many eggs? That is a good question. I do not know. What was yours? Ooh, I kind of like Zilwaukee just because it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and I also like Modesto. I think it's a cute name. Like Modesto, modest. Yeah, that was cute. I like that one. That was nice. Yeah, that was a nice one. So the articles that I used for this research for this podcast or this part of the podcast were mentalfloss, reservations.com, britannica.com, conwayscene.com, and mentalfloss.com. Love mentalfloss. It's a good website. Mm-hmm. I like it. All right. Should we now answer one of the burning questions? What does space smell like? <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so kendra don't look at the article don't re- read my research yet okay do you do you have a guess of like what space smells like um... just use like your educated guess like what do you imagine and i do not think it tastes like the new coca-cola <laughs> thing I, oh the space i heard it tastes like cotton candy or something like See, the I've new heard Col- that too i've heard that too but my sister tried it and she, she t- says it tastes like graham cracker Ooh. Because apparently, well, it tastes like Coca-Cola with a hint of graham cracker towards the end. (laughs) But I guess what she read was on their website, apparently they claim that it's not the taste of space. It's the taste of like the feeling you're supposed to get when you look up at the stars at night. So like basically it's supposed to taste like a Coca-Cola s'more. Okay. I'm going to go with space (laughs) smells like graham crackers. Graham crackers? Yeah. I wish it did, but it really doesn't. Okay, so, although, so although it is currently impossible for humans to actually smell space because yep. you know it's a vacuum and you'll die within seconds. Uh huh. Yes. However, many astronauts have recounted what the what's like their suits smell like when they get back from spacewalks. Like the outside so they, of the suit, or yeah, oh. well, <laughs> yeah, not the inside. <laughs> I like... don't want to know. <laughs> but the outside, yeah. So like, what is left in that brief, like when they're getting depressurized? Right, um, or like brought back to livable conditions, right? Yeah, in their station exactly. Yeah, what they smell and like what some of the operators smell like the ones that didn't go out, but they like they're helping them take off the suits and stuff. What they smell like apparently the particles from outside get attached to the suit. So, what they say it smells like is burned or fried steak. What? Yeah, at least that's one of the things. There's more, I'll get into it. But yeah, that's one of the that's one of the things it smells like. 
So, the smell of space is so distinct that three years ago, NASA reached out to Stephen Pierce of the fragrance maker Omega and Omega Ingredients to recreate the odor for its training simulations. So, quote, we recently recently we did the smell of the moon, Pierce says. Astronauts compared it to the, to the scent of spent gunpowder. So that's what, apparently the moon smells like spent gunpowder. Oh, wow. Weird. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I think, I guess to me, it's like, it's mostly rocks and dirt. So I think it's more like dirt. But I would think more, like, yeah, maybe like more, if I wasn't trying to be funny with graham cracker, <laughs> or like like a metallic yeah, like metal, yeah. like copper or something, but fried mm-hmm. steak. Well, that's space. The moon supposedly smells like gunpowder. The moon is gunpowder. Okay. Apparently, yeah. Yep. So Almadala explains that our solar system is particularly pungent because it is rich in carbon and low in oxygen. And quote, just like a car, if you swerve, if you starve it of oxygen, you start to see the black soot and get a foul smell. Oxygen-rich stars, however, have aromas reminiscent of a charcoal grill. Ooh, that smells good. It kind of does, yeah. Mm -hmm. So once you leave our galaxy, however, the smells can get really interesting. In dark pockets of the universe, molecular clouds full of tiny dust particles host a variable smorgasbord of odors. From anywhere from wafts of sweet sugar to rotten egg stench of sulfur. Ugh. So, outside of our galaxy, you can get anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, this is how NASA astronaut Don Petit described the smell of space after a mission back in 2003. So, this is his quote. It is hard to describe the smell. It's it's definitely not the olfactory equivalent to describing the palate sensations of some new food as tastes as tastes like chicken. So it's not like a, a smell you can really like pinpoint. It's kind of like the you know overall thing you know because you know like how people are like oh frog legs taste like chicken or like this yep. tastes like chicken. Yep. It, you can't really do that with the smell of space. The best description I can come up with is metallic, a rather pleasant, sweet metallic sensation. It reminded me of my college summers, where I labored for many hours with an arc welding torch, rest- repairing heavy equipment for a small lodging outfit. It reminded me of the pleasant, sweet-smelling welding fumes. That is the smell of space. Ooh, okay. So, so yeah, so... I've also seen, so a lot of people, a lot of astronauts say that it smells of fried steak or burnt steak, metallic, like welding, or some, like kind of rarely, but some people have said that it smells like walnuts or a burnt Ooh. almond cookie. <laughs> Ooh. So I like almond cookie. Yeah, I like, I like burnt almond too. cookie. Yeah. Okay, so it just all depends on It kind of depends. I think, astronaut. What, yeah. Yep. Pretty much. Yeah. Like I think too, like kind of where they're at, like what they're doing probably too. Mm-hmm. But so yeah. Fried steak and metallic fumes. <laughs> Delicious. Del- Delicious. Delicious. Oh, man. I think it's cool, though, that they could make a perfume to help Smell train like astronauts. It. Yeah, that's like, kind that's of cool. weird. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's yeah, cool. That's, <laughs> that's, that's cool. That's definitely not the normal for anyone that works at Omega or, like, the mm-hmm. um, the fragrance um, office. They're like, can you make us... Hey, it's NASA. Can you make us a scent that smells like space? Like, yeah, like, oh, sick. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, metal. <laughs> oh, oh, metal and burnt steak. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Wouldn't it? I wonder, do they sell a candle that smells like this? I wonder. I don't know. I'm going to look it up. Smells like space. Ooh. Yeah, I guess yeah, I don't know if, I don't see like any actual candles that smells like actual space. It's like also has hints of lavender and oh. things like that. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it'd be cool to have something that smells like supposedly what space smells like. That would be cool. Mm-hmm. I'd buy it. Good Christmas gift. Yeah. All right. So some of the resources that I use for this portion of the podcast were PopSci or PopScience.com and Space.com. All right, Wanders, thank you so much for joining in and listening to another Foolish Wanders podcast. Again, if you'd like to give us any future episode ideas or just say, hey, feel free to email us at fwplisteners at gmail.com. Check out our Instagram for some companion images for episodes. And new episodes of the FWP are out every single Wednesday from wherever you get your podcasts. And make sure you like, like, subscribe, and comment, and hit that notifications button. Yes. All right, Wanderers, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you guys next time.
that's that sauce. That's that dressing. <laughs> that's my favorite um line from a rap song. What, what is it? It's that sauce. It's that dressing. Oh, G on G. <laughs> and they say, God bless you. <laughs> what? What? You sneezed? Yeah, but he says Givenchy, and that's a French luxury clothing brand. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, but they say, he says, like, Givenchy, and he says, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a sneeze, and he says it, like, in a high pitch tone, like, he's sneezing. But oh, yeah, that's my favorite, like, rap. Is it a line? Is it a sentence? Is it a phrase? I don't know, but that's my favorite. <laughs> it's that sauce. It's that dressing. Givenchy. God bless you.